some are considered murder and some aren't. And the moral relativists would argue that they would use that as an example to say that, well, if it's okay to kill someone in war, if it's okay to kill someone with a death penalty, then why can't, then that means murder is not a universal moral law, I guess. That's kind of yeah. what I think they would argue. Yeah, that. then then that, that would mean that, you know, a person around the world is eligible to be killed if and when these situations happen, right? So it's, but I think in itself, I, you know, I'm trying to think about it objectively, like without right. without any <laughs> bias, right? But yeah, hard, you know, yeah, it, it, it almost sounds kind of hard to defeat, um, to say like, well, this person should receive death because they killed somebody else, for example right? Who sets the standards? And I think nowadays, the the countries have been the ones that, you know, tend to decide whether one is, right. you know, destined for death, right? If yeah, no, they do yeah, exactly. This. Yeah, it's become a lot of uh, politicized. I think a lot of things become politicized and in different ways on different sides and whatever. And that can complicate it as well. And, and you know, because you're right. Uh, I would say I would argue that, you know, politics, lawmakers, and people in a society define the man-made laws that we follow, like the death mm-hmm. penalty. Yeah, yeah, because because in itself, you know, there, like you said, there is man-made laws, but are all man-made laws moral? Yeah, like you're talking about the last podcast about some laws being arbitrary, like having to yeah. go all the way around to go to the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is some laws where you know. Like some people pass red lights all the time, you know, that's, that's a very like good sign. You know, it says stop, you know, and sometimes people just pass that stop sign, you know, and don't, you know, maybe they didn't see it, you know, um, but you know, they say, well, if it didn't kill anyone or if it didn't do any damage, then it's okay. Right. So would that make a gray uh, area? Yeah, and what so does that mean that man-made laws, the laws that are created by a government or society, are those subjective? Would that mean that they're subjective since they're kind of like created by human beings? You know, I guess I guess some of them can have an objective truth, but some of them are subjective. I would argue that the only objective part about the about the law is that it's universal only in the United States. Like, for example, we follow the laws of the speed limit or not running a stop sign. Or, well, mm-hmm. let's just go to speed limit, right? So let's say the speed limit on one highway in America is 35 miles an hour or whatever. But in another country on the same highway or a similar highway, we could say the speed limit is 45, 10 miles higher. Yeah. And so it's not, I would argue that in that sense, it's not objective because if it were objective, then the speed limit would be the same in both countries on the similar highway. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you can apply that to different metaphors and stuff, but I think it's an interesting idea. I guess you could turn it objective if, you know, if you say, well, the highway, if there's a way to test it, like, let's say, well, this highway was built with a certain angle. And if people go past this speed limit, then that could cause, you know, death to not, to that person or they could you know uh if they go too fast on this curb they could you know end up uh going out of the curb if they're going too fast and but the other highway maybe it's just like a straight line so okay yeah you can go 10 miles faster right and right. so i guess like you know people change the the speed limits depending on you know the curves and stuff like that maybe engineers and professionals have I figured out a formula to to understand like oh well you know at this speed limit you know people are going to be able to make that curb and in the laws of physics you know it says that you know that'll be enough speed to not fly off off the the curb right. or hit and somebody I, trying to do a turn yeah and i know that, that could turn into an objective that could, truth that probably plays a role likely and, and i know also that they also base they lower speed limits in areas where there's like a lot of car accidents, so they can go based off statistics. And technically, well, you know, you can get really into a rabbit hole of statistics because I know some people argue that, you know, even if especially if you study it really deeply, that you can't even trust statistics all the time either. It depends on the source, it depends on how 
the statistics were conducted. But going on another, I guess diving deeper into philosophy, have you ever mm-hmm. heard of the, uh, here's a really good uh, moral, moral dilemma challenge, right? Have you ever heard of the, uh, the dolly tram dilemma, you know, with the train? I, I, yeah, I think I, <laughs> yeah, I think I heard yeah, it. Yeah, where it's like one person's on one track, right? And, yeah, but then and there's somebody like could five, die. There's you five, to... so like a, one of your family members is mm. on one track, just one person. But then you have yeah. five people over here uh, who could also get hit. So there's two different tracks. So you could either pull the lever of the train to hit five people or to hit your family member. And it's like, well, what would you do, you know? And, and yeah. what, would, what does morality tell you to do in that situation? It's a really hard question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in one occasion, you would save five people. Then in the other one, you would save a family yeah. member. If you go so by your you bias. Have, there's a degree, then, yeah. I guess, I don't know if there's a degree of like how much worth is there in one than the other. Because yeah. you can say also like, well, who, who are those five people, right? Yeah. Well, are they just, you know, robbers who ended up, you know, falling into the track or are they, uh, you know, are they doctors that save lives or are they, uh, are they priests? Are they, are they really important people in society? Like, and then you can scale, I guess the, the value of like, okay, how much worth, you know, but in in a split second, if, if, if if it's like, okay, they tell you, Two, in two seconds, it's going to hit your mom or it's going to hit five other people. Well, then you're like, oh, shoot, like five other people. I think in that split second, you know, our primal response is save five for the one. Right. I think we've always heard that, like, you right. know, it's worth numbers. more saving more. Yeah. In numbers, because yeah. but at the at the end of the day, like w- one person can contribute as much as five people can. You know, yeah, so really like, hard. let's say that it's, one yeah, person depends, yeah. is, you know, I don't know, um, a leader in a, in a really big company or, uh, or something like that. Let's say a doctor, right? A doctor can save five other people, right? A, a doctor can save yeah. lives, right? And so in, in the five other people, you know, what if they're just, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I don't want to lower the value of life of, of <laughs> another uh, profession, but you know, let's say let's say they're not working. They're they decide to be unemployed, you know, for some reason because they don't want to work. Well, right now they're not contributing at the moment to any any of society's you know um, values or or missions, and so they're they're not doing anything. And so if you knew that in advance. Yeah, you know what would you do? Uh, so here's here's something that brings to mind. Act uh, it's called act utilitarianism versus deontology. And the famous philosopher Kant came up with deontology. Act utilitarianism. I can't remember, but basically, act utilitarianism is saying what you're saying, kind of like if they're unemployed, then they mm. have, I guess, less value. The utility. So yeah. you would let, so you would let them die because it goes based on utility exactly. Whereas deontology and Kant would argue that the intention behind the moral decision matters. 